All right, guys, and welcome to Invariance.Poker Podcast. Today we have Charles, who's a, into crypto that I met at the poker table here, and his friend Brad, who's been into uh, IT for about 30 years. But uh, I'm not going to butcher it, so I'm going to let them introduce themselves. <laughs> so go ahead first, Charles. Um, thanks for having me, Tom. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Uh, my name is Charles Christian Israel. I am the chief investment officer of a company called New Creation Capital. We focus in crypto and technology, uh, in investments, long-term wealth management, things like that, but really focusing on the research of everything. And we'll get into that, so I won't talk too much, but I'll go ahead and let Brad introduce himself. Yeah, my name is Brad Gleason. Um, I'm also I, I, I'm chief operating officer at a company called Ten Hill. I'm out of St. Louis, Missouri. Um, really got into crypto about two years ago, thanks to this guy sitting next to me over here after a successful 30-year um, uh, career in technology. Uh, I needed my next thing and uh, got my eyes opened up into the digital asset space, specifically in fintech, and started doing research and got my mind blown and went down the rabbit hole. And now here I am today. Yes, sir. All right. So you've been down the rabbit hole just like us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's start. Where, where should we start? A lot happened since uh, we last met, right? Um, the, like crypto's crashing. Let's start with that. Crypto's correcting. 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 Okay. Correcting is the right yeah. word. You, you, you'll hear the people on television and, and radio and so forth say that it's crashing because it gets right. bigger headlines that way. Yeah. But, but this is predictive, and I'll let Charles talk about well, that. Last time we talked, I think I yeah. said at the poker table, Bitcoin had topped. Yeah. And that I expect in a correction before we go all in, and it would be happening here soon, and we are literally right there. I do TA as well as the research, which is technical analysis, basically people who do the charting, mm -hmm. and be able to predict not just long-term but short-term moves. So when I say correction... In crypto, a 50 to 70% move in a bull market is normal. Now, we are no longer in a Bitcoin bull market. Mm -hmm. For your listeners, that means going up and up only. We are in a correction pattern, but altcoins or called alternative coins, other things besides Bitcoin, are still in its bull market. So there's still a little bit push left there, but this correction is scary if you're in equities where outside of Netflix, a 22% move will scare you. But now the equities market is feeling what we feel in crypto on a normal day. We call it Tuesday. So how long is this correction expected to last? Well, corrections in bear markets can last a year to two years. There's still retraces, ups and downs, but this correction seems to be quick match with the equities market because of what's going on in the world, mm -hmm. right? So I'm expecting the first quarter sell off to finish here in the next week and a half. Um, I believe we have already bottomed. We're going to call what's called a double bottom, which means come back and touch the lows of Bitcoin, which is thirty-two to $33,000, and then head up to the 50 k level next. Okay. Um, I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum where I think this is not a correction. This is actually going to be like a meltdown. Okay. But so my, I've been looking in a little bit into Tether. And, okay, yep. and they'd be talking about the volume of Tether in trading versus the volume of Bitcoin, and it's just overwhelming. And then Tether is supposed to be a stable coin, but mm -hmm. now it's not even backed by anything. Or so. <laughs> it, look, I'll tell you a little secret. Uh -huh. it, it wasn't backed before. <laughs> right. <laughs> so then, so then how, you, have the, you have basically an entity creating infinite amount of crypto, and then they just pounding it into the market. Do you see how I'm smiling right now? Yes. Because you sound like you're describing the U.S. dollar to me. Right. Which is no different than Tether, right? Which yeah. is an issue because mm -hmm. they're printing and they're actually, this is what they won't tell you. This is what the media won't tell you. They're connected with Circle, right? Which is connected with Algorand, which is connected with the digital U.S. dollar. Okay. Right? So what is being printed, in order for that to go, they have to have the okay from the Federal Reserve, which they do have the okay from the Federal Reserve to print because who is buying that, who is backing that, is actually the Federal Reserve, which is BlackRock. So BlackRock is able to do their Bitcoin ETF, which when you saw that $10 million, $100 million printed, it goes to BlackRock. Those are the ones who are purchasing this Bitcoin. Wall Street is purchasing the Bitcoin as the retail sellers sell. Now, are we melting down? Yes, but is it gonna happen as quickly as it's expected right now? No. Will we see a $10,000 to $12,000 Bitcoin again this year? Yes. Is it going to happen tomorrow? No. But what Warren Buffett says is that, and I love this quote, money, investing is about moving money from the patient, from the inpatient to the patient. Right. right now, understanding the markets, we expect a retrace, but then we get out and then let it dump. Mm -hmm. Everybody like you are waiting for the bottom, bottom, bottom. You are going to have to be a little more patient 
but that's going to pay off in the end for you for sure. Right. So then the other day we also talked about how you mentioned that the uh, U.S. is going to convert to digital currency, mm -hmm. and you actually named some specific dates on some conversions or some some like I guess banking. Yeah, switches. yeah, so yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's give us some finite data like so, dates. So you know you can we'll search this. I'm, I'm going to drop a, a TikTok new creation capital as where <laughs> I drop all my social media stuff, but. I got a letter from the ABA, uh, America's Banker Association, to a response to the Federal Reserve about switching the SWIFT system over and about switching ISO 20022 over with the clearinghouse and the Federal Reserve. Now that sounds crazy with all that talk, but what that means is all the different banking systems are communicating about when to switch everything over. The great to, switch. The great, the great switch, the, the great reset to flip everything over. And what they have suggested in their documents is November 2nd and 3rd of 2023, do everything flipped all at once on the same day. Now, in November of 2022, this year, SWIFT is switching just its system. Mm -hmm. And then next year, the whole thing will flip, which is actually goes definitely in line with the charts for corrections and bottoms. So my bottom for this, so the whole thing would be end of this year going into next year. And then the bottom to go on this parabolic run that we're in now would be in November of 2023 to have massive generating wealth for everybody in crypto. Like when you say massive generating wealth, how, how's it generating wealth and how do these people, how do people get on, get a piece of it? Well, for the lack of a, a hard way to say it, you just gotta trust what your research is. And then what I mean by that is, and I was just speaking to him about it, if you invested in Amazon. Yeah, look at the Amazon chart. And, and we had this conversation before we got here today when we were at the juice shop, okay? And, and one of the things, if you knew for sure, you wouldn't, you wouldn't sell and miss, yeah. okay? You'd hold it. Right. Um, that would have been the wise thing to do. Most people don't do that. You know, just like here, you know, when you're playing cards, you're, what you're doing is, you, you pick your places to get in and get out, right? right. So the, the difference is in, in this situation is that once you, you know, if you know, if you saw the future and saw this go the way that it did, mm -hmm. well, you'd be insane to sell at any point and risk, you know, right. get, getting back in at the low, getting out at the high, getting in at the low, getting in at the high. Yeah. It, 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 chances are you're not going to do that. But if you, if you knew it was going to do that, you just, you put your chips in, you let it ride out. Right. And, and you see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, investments in itself is five to 10 years, period. That's what you want to see in a, in a real investment. Now, if you're looking for the six months casino to quick rich, yeah. people can make a lot of money, but you know. You can wealth, lose a lot too. You can yeah. lose a lot, but wealth <laughs> is generated over time. Right. And so I've been in this space now for six years and it's already changed my life. Now, this correction has been scary. And I tell my clients mm -hmm. this, I've lost more money on paper mm -hmm. than I thought mm -hmm. I'd ever own in my life but I'm still at the same own as much money now than I ever thought I'd own yeah. in my life. And that's after a 70% correction. I'm still expecting 10, 10X from here. And now when I say that, when I mean that, I'm, I will say right here on camera easily today to everybody that I expect something that is 55 cents right now to be at $15 in the next three months. Next and that's, three months. that's because that's what crypto does. Remember, uh, Bitcoin, everyone's upset about Bitcoin, but less than a year ago, or in 2020, March 2020, Bitcoin went to $3,600. And then a year later, it's at 64K. I'm not a Bitcoin person, yeah. but correct. But think about that. But you say something, you say the bounce back is going to be next three months? Or yes. Next, so you're saying, let's say Bitcoin is going to go back up in the next three months? Bitcoin in the next couple of weeks will, nice. will be up to, I would say, 45K mm -hmm. and then on its way to 51 in the retrace, and then it will go back down to 20. Yes. Oh, okay. So it's going to go up and back down. Yes. It's, it's, not, it's Elliott. So I trade what's called Elliott waves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's moving in a wave structure. Waves within a waves. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I, I've, I've, I've read, I kind of read up about it and it just kind of boggled my mind. Yeah. Like wave three within wave one, within wave five. So Yeah, it just keeps going. Yeah, just and that's why we going. use the term going down the rabbit hole because you can just keep going indefinitely. Yeah. But uh, so when you say they could invest in, to get generational wealth, are you saying any crypto or I'm assuming because you said there's a certain, certain amount of crypto and mm -hmm. you mentioned that before. So I will say this also, 99% of cryptos are useless. Okay. Or will be. Or will be soon with regulation coming through. But just like uh, technology moves, there's certain things that are going to stick. The internet, right? Certain mm -hmm. things will stick. And that is what the government tells us, right? Yeah. The government told you Google was going to stick. The government told you AT&T, Verizon, these were going to, Netflix, these were going to sit. The world government, United Nations, World Economic Forum, 
of all mentioned literally seven cryptos. Okay. These are what we are using. It, okay, you want me to go over? It? Yes, let's go. That's that's the important one, so that they know where <laughs> okay, to put their so money in. You can Google this before, when they go. We look at the World Economic Forum crypto. Okay, okay? ISO twenty two. We got Algo. Algo. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got XLM, which is Stellar. You got Ripple, which is XRP. You've got XDC, which is Zenfin, which will go with the finance markets. Uh, you also have HBAR, which is Hedera Hashgraph. You also have IOTA, mm -hmm. which runs with a lot of the cars. Uh, let's see, am I missing anything outside of Quant? <clears throat> well, VeChain is, is one of those that, it, it, because they're so far ahead of the um, of, of how supply infrastructure chain. supply chain supply chain infrastructure is going to run nothing's going to touch that but you have to understand that so much of this is going to you know into blockchain technology that's the real basis everybody gets caught up on the coins yeah. just tell me about the coins I don't care about what they do tell me about the coins to get into but it, it's helpful to understand some of the fundamentals so I'm more in the fundamental basket he's more of the technical analysis basket but it's when these things you know come together it's like you get excited because you kind of understand where things are ultimately going yeah so the number one technology we look for which is what all this is run is called distributed ledger technology dlt any crypto right or digital asset that fundamentally set on distributed ledger technology mm -hmm. use case that's where your money is anything right. that's a meme coin or a social coin Right. I'll say it right now, and I'm sure people can get mad at me, Dodge or Shiba Nu, those are not going to create generational wealth. Those will create lottery tickets, right, right mm -hmm. which is great for everybody. You time it right, you, you, could, you could do good. But those coins I just named, those are generational wealth coins. Uh, Long holds. Uh, those coins, it, so what about Cardano and, and AD, ADA? ADA, Cardano, I believe is there right now. The only issue with that, if you're a tech person, mm -hmm. is they don't have any dApps going on. There's no structure, but... I got in at Cardano and under a penny. Mm -hmm. So I am a strong believer. I believe Cardano is still going to get $5 this cycle, 475 to be specific. So if the, gov the World Economic Forum doesn't list, like, say, Cardano on, the, on there, then what? Well, so here's what's going to happen versus, well, so Cardano is already in the ballpark. They're going to be able to do transactions without the Internet. They're, they're partnered with Ripple. Ripple is partnered in everything. Yeah. So that space is there That because they do the smart contracts. You don't have to be named specifically by the government to get my okay. But for me, with the government, for, if I want a, like an assurance, mm -hmm. I'm willing to see what is the government going. And they're moving with you know the C-19, the, the passports, all that. That's going to blockchain, which is going to go to crypto, which it is crypto, which they're already talking about. So if I'm looking for almost guaranteed, right? I think to me, Cardano is still a higher gamble because yeah. it's not guaranteed to be used but if i know you're going to be used by the government that's where i'm going and that's other coins that i name v chain is a chinese yeah uh, uh so we don't know how that regime is going to allow that to be used with crypto but that that is not the technology is there but the right. technology they're partnering with walmart already yeah like it's there so it just depends on so when you case. say the list is actually the list of where the government Mm -hmm. It's actually involved in some way, whereas let's say a coin like Sol Solana, Solana? Or where mm -hmm. they, that's on the list the, too. Their own, okay. Solana's on the list. Yep. Okay. Terra. So if they're not on the list, but they have their own ecosystem, they we could still hold those coins. We're not like going to be banned from holding these coins, are we? Oh, oh. well. So can I answer this? Real yes, quick? absolutely. This this is a tricky. This is a tight. This is the tightrope walk. So let me let me educate. Some people might know this already. There's this thing called the Gold Act in 20, uh, yeah. 1913, right, where you were turning over your gold, and if you didn't, you got a hundred thousand dollar fine or ten mm -hmm. years in jail. And then they took it the, at the time they took it, the price of gold was seven dollars right. an ounce, and then they made a decision on a world level to make it forty two dollars an ounce, mm -hmm. right? When that happened, that was after they turned everything over because that was a financial flip. That's when we went from the the U S dollar to depend on gold. Well, this thing here, and I'm going to have, you're going to have two different sides of this. Your Bitcoin people are going to tell me crazy. Mm -hmm. Your utility people are going to love what I'm going to say right now. Okay. And what that means is Ripple is designed to move all the money. Nostro Vostros, free up money, okay? Now, what that means is we talked about this at the poker table. Whenever we do money and we transfer money between each other in banks, it works on the SWIFT system, which is a messaging system. Mm -hmm. It's an IOU. So whenever I send you money to a bank, the bank says, hey, he's got the money, we owe you the money, and it's going to take three to four days to settle. So therefore, your bank has to hold that money, right. and my bank also has to hold that money. With XRP specifically, and it moves, it's an immediate thing. Not only is it immediate, but you don't have to hold money, so it frees up money. And guess what? Instead of costing you $30, it costs you less than a penny. And it's instant. It's There's instant. No, it's in, like when I say instant, I mean 
this this plays out on a way bigger format too when we talk about globally. Uh, okay. I agree because then now we're talking about stock market and failure to deliveries, which is the GameStop saga, North S- Naked Shorting. Smart contracts. Smart contracts. Smart which contracts. Is NFTs, right? Yes. That's why I, I try to tell people NFTs are not pictures, but they're smart contracts with, with uh, serial number for digital verification that could be mm-hmm. transferred, like you said, Ownership. smoothly. Yep. Mm-hmm. And this is what it's about. Like, why can I send information quickly, but I can't send money? Right. Money is what makes everything move. So mm-hmm. you can't do it slowly. So it's all going to flip. So the volume will come in immediately. Mm-hmm. So when they say flip the switch in November of 2023, that means all these things that are being used slowly can now be flooded. So that means regulation will be done by then. Mm-hmm. Right. Things labeled security, not security. All this is over. And so now the floodgates are allowed. And now the real money comes into play. Right now we're speculating versus utility. The next bull run will be a utility bull run. So everybody stuck in Dodge coin will make a little bit, or even the NFTs will make a little bit. But if you were in these coins, those that I just named, like eight main ones, you are going to get generational so, wealth. So like, let's uh, try to conceptualize what utility versus speculation, because you, you said that we're, we're about to leave the era of speculation into the era of utility. Yes. So let's try to help well, one other thing, and don't forget this, but the original question was, and I'll guarantee you there's somebody out there right now that's probably saying, no, tell me what's going to happen. Am I going to be able to sell this stuff if I, if I get it, right? Because I guarantee you somebody out there right now, so get to the point. Yeah, so, so well, let me finish on the, the, the gold buyback. So with the Ripple XRP, we believe that will be something because exchanges are getting locked out on that the consumer retail investor like you will not be allowed to own or sell and this is why that's why i told the gold story right right that's why our company exists so you'll be able to get rid of it because they block out exchanges you can have something worth ten thousand dollars but what good is if you can't sell it and that's where they're going after exchanges that's why getting into it now like when the lawsuit dropped you couldn't you can't it's hard for people to buy xrp now because of the sec action that took place a, a year ago last december it really blocked out the exchanges here in the U.S. They wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole, but it's it's artificially being held down. So for people that you know had the opportunity to accumulate it, the biggest fear is not accumulating at this point. It's your question, which is, well, I accumulate. Let's say it does do what you say it's going to do. How do I capitalize on that? Well, look up. Have people look at PolySci, so, uh, so, standard uh, custody. So let's say that, let's say there's an instant where. A coin like Monero, which is very privacy coin. Privacy, privacy coin. Right? coin. Mm-hmm. So now there's like the government said you can't own it. What do you think happens then? Well, they've already said that. So let's start there, right? So when Bitcoin, when the, when the hackers happened over the summer and they wanted three million in Bitcoin and they were able to get the wallets and they announced we were able to hack the wallets, right? The reason they want permit uh, Monero because they can't do that with Monero. So they have already outlawed it, but it still runs. I mean, Bitcoin was banned for the longest. You can't. You're not gonna be able to ban crypto on a large level. It's right. not going to happen. So do you think period. it's going to create an underground market where, hey, uh, here's my here's my ledger when we do for like a for human to human transaction with these, okay, here's my Monero. Pe- yeah, pe- the- people have to get comfortable with it yeah. though. I, well, but the, then the question, next question is, okay, like the reason these coins have value is because they're blockchain and ledger, right? right? But Monero, why would I go trade with you Monero person to person what what value does monero that's, have there that's that's easy supply and demand okay right it's that's that's what makes the difference it creates that's, value that's what bitcoin maxis it's all about that yeah scream is supply there's only 21 million ever built or ever made or ever mined or ever will be mined right yeah. and eventually once they're all mined it will create value and that's monero's in that same thing but once cash is gone i mean at yeah. the poker table imagine us having to every time we do a 600 hundred dollar transaction we we have to report it and i talked about this last time yeah that's annoying Right. If we're at six hundred dollars, think about every transaction yeah. we do at that poker table. Yeah. How many times in a pot is there six hundred dollars in a pot? Every other hand. Yeah. So imagine that being taxed for the IRS every time. And then you tell me if privacy coins are going to be important for us to make that movement without being taxed every single time. Yes. The, the other thing, too, to, uh, an important distinguishment between um, that coin and, and Bitcoin is you also have to understand, I think, where some of the market's going. You, you can touch on this maybe a little bit more, but we're, we're going through a wholesale change of what used to be and in, in what is currently you know, proof of work. Okay, versus proof of stake. Yeah. Okay, and, and we're gonna we're going through this wholesale change right now as we speak. That's where everything's 
potentially going. And, and so you have to start being able to understand these things, conceptualize them, and then your questions get answered themselves because you can kind of see where all of this is ultimately going. So I don't know if we answered the question. Let's just say the government outlaws some of these coins. Then how, what, would the, what would people do to start? So outside of getting a, okay, I got to be careful what I say here. <laughs> All right. This is not, let me look at the camera. This is not, that's the camera. That's the camera. This right is right not there. financial advice. This is for educational purposes <laughs> yeah. only. I am not telling you to defraud the government or the IRS in any way, what shape or form. Now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> the way it works is you can use a VPN. All right, a VPN gets you to use other exchanges around the world because only America is, America, let me tell you, America, China, Russia. Mm -hmm. Those are the three countries in the world that are trying to ban crypto. That should tell you something. Everywhere else in the world is allowing you to purchase it. Freedom of movement, freedom of currency. So if you are not allowed and they ban it, which it's already banned, you can use a VPN and sell it on other exchanges as long as other countries aren't banning and controlling the internet. And these exchanges are like Polka, which is the... Uh which is the coin itself or something oh, like, like that? So I'll, I'll give an example. Yeah. KuCoin or... Uh, up, up, you know, uh, um, Uphold. Well, that's an American one. Yeah. I was referring to... Okay. Off, but off but would those exchanges okay. be... They're centralized. They're, so so they you, could, you have... So you, you could be exposed to being reported yeah. or something. You, so you do have Coinbase, which is centralized, which does report everything to the government. Uphold. Robinhood will report everything to the government. Yeah. Binance. Binance will report everything to the government. But then you have things like BitTrue, which is based out of Mexico, right? that if you use a VPN and you don't, what's called KYC uh, or AML with these exchanges, that means you don't sign up, let them know who you are, they don't care, which it's an issue for the American government. One other thing that you kind of need to start understanding is swaps, okay? Yeah, swaps. That's why because swaps are, th th that's how this is all, it, it's, it's funny because regulators are always going to be 10 steps behind. It's yeah. important that, the, and I'm going to say this, it is important that there's regulation in the space so it can, it can actually yeah. flourish, all right? But the fact of the matter is, you know, it's like, the regulators are 10 steps behind, you know, swaps are already put in place so that the Texas. reporting mechanism isn't there anymore. So, you, you know, you have a coin, let's say that is illegal in the United States, but it's not illegal anywhere else. And you can go to a different swap and swap, swap that out. And now you're on the blockchain anyway. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like uh, pancake swaps or yeah, yeah. like, like polka. Is it, isn't polka, polka dot. And, yep. Yep. And, dot. And sushi. Yep. Sushi so swap. Those are swaps. Curve. Okay. All, all of the so DeFi those, projects. Okay. Yep. So those are what I was referring to okay. where... They're coins, but they're actually exchanges, but not exchanges, well, see, but they're swaps. So here's my issue. Again, I'm going to pee off a lot of your people. I'm not an Ethereum lover, uh -huh. and that's my issue with swaps is I'm trying to change $15, but it's going to cost me 50 If like, you do it with, yeah, if, with the, those gas fees, they're on ETH. The gas fees are very, very expensive, very, very slow. And again, <laughs> why am I a Ripple person? Because no matter what I move, it's under a penny, and it's under three seconds. Yeah. Okay. So Ethereum. A, tra a transaction on the XRP ledger is a drop. One drop of XRP is one one millionth of an XRP coin. So, why isn't this knowledge public where people? It is. Are? I guess <laughs> you've it's also got to find it. Well, yeah, so you got people to know it. Well, yeah. I mean, remember, the SEC is not suing Bitcoin. The SEC is yeah. not suing Ethereum. They're suing Ripple, which is the ones that is actually. So, am I? Well, I don't know about this lawsuit now. But are they suing them because of something, or are they actually suing yeah, them yes. because they're trying to capture the technology? No, but, they're not trying to capture the technology. I'm going to let you talk because this is <laughs> this is his bailiwick. This is why. By the way, yeah. this is why I got into this space in the first place. And when I got my eyes opened up to this, then I started researching everything else. Yeah. And boom. so, the, the the fact of the matter is. It, it's the SEC is suing, okay, Ripple because they didn't disclose this as a commodity. Well, it's not a commodity. Okay. ETH got a free pass, Bitcoin got a free pass, but they're coming after Ripple because it's their way of suing into regulation, right? And you also have to understand regulation this also by enforcement. It, regulation by enforcement. And, and, and the other thing that this did essentially is block most, most of the unknowing retail from accumulating this asset. So you ask, when we go back, what happens if they ban it? Well, gold, right? They didn't yeah. move it to 42 and then say, we'll get it. They want this technology out they of They set the price, side. you either do it or we're gonna fine you. Mm -hmm. And then what happens the day after? Then it fires up, right? So, I mean, there's a great quote in Wolf of Wall Street, right? Where Leonardo DiCaprio is talking to the person on the phone one day and talking about the little penny stocks and he says, well, it's in a lawsuit, but if you wait to the lawsuit, it's too late. And anyone, if you watch any lawsuit that the SEC has been involved with, with a multi-billion dollar company, Ripple is a multi-billion dollar startup. Mm 
mm -hmm. that sits in the same rooms with the top banks in the world. The only crypto company, I'm going to say this again, the only crypto company, company, not asset company, that sits in with the top of the European bank, the World uh, Bank, uh, International Banks. The IMF, the IMF, International Mon Monetary uh, Fund. Wu, uh, everybody. I mean, these people are the top. Like, they're set with the Rockefellers. They're doing stuff with the Gates Foundation. So you asked why doesn't the normal people know it? Well, turn on the mass media. What does mass media tell the normal person? Of course, they Plus, tell, they tell them what they don't want to hear. Who, who, who sponsors Fox News? Of or, you know, who sponsors Fox I, Business? Who sponsors? I'm, it's I'm the a, banks. I'm a GameStop guy, so I'm I'm, I'm all against the, the, the so mainstream don't. media. They just they just basically a bunch of shields. So but, I believe. But, but but the information is there. You just gotta look for it. And yeah. unfortunately, as most of your folks know, most people are sheep. They want to be led, and, and so they just lead by just zoning out. And, you got to go find and remember, it. remember, so when I'm ready to sell, there has to be a buyer, mm -hmm. okay? And this is how the markets work, and I, I'm giving you the secret. Us are in it cheap. When the mass media starts telling you to buy, they started telling people to buy Bitcoin at 64K. When I was telling people to sell Bitcoin, yeah. they told people to sell Bitcoin at 3600 the bottoms and the tops. So what the mass media does is the opposite. So when they sell you to start buying, you should start selling. When, when Jamie Dimon threatened everybody at J.P. Morgan Chase that they would be fired if he found out that they were buying Bitcoin or any other crypto, and this is 2017, because it, it, it on the outside looked like it was threatening banks, you know what he was doing? Accumulating Bitcoin. Accumulating Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Of course. Goldman Sachs is trying to get an ETF, BlackRock, the ETF, which I mentioned, the banks are doing it. So that's also, whenever you see the massive corrections, they're future corrections. They're not actually sellers. It's the manipulation of the market in itself. So when someone needs to get a sell, the price has to drop. So in the charts, you can see volume, how much something's moving. Well, on this massive move down for Bitcoin and a lot of crypto, we've lost $1.3 trillion in the market. However, the volume is not there. So money-wise, yes, but the actual assets are not being sold. It's being that narrative. And now they're saying it's the bottom sell when I'm telling you in the next, literally, Bitcoin's going to increase by 50% in the next month. Don't, don't listen to the media. Watch what the whales do. But, so, do you I guess if you, you don't, if you think Bitcoin's going to go up, then what about the, uh, the equities market then? Because right now it's tanking as well. And mm -hmm. do you think it's going to go up with the crypto market or it's going to continue meltdown? Because you look at all the charts and the repo mm -hmm, mm -hmm. volume, like leverage is off the hooks and mm -hmm. the, the real cash amount. Way cash, overbought. Yeah. Like, so every, everything's leveraged out of the ass. So. so I told this guy a year and a half ago, first quarter of 2022, the market was going to crash. Do you think we... This was COVID time, right? Yeah. So why do I see that? Again, I'm going to come back to the charts. That's what they show. Since 2008, that dip, when I say dip, that correction in 2008 has now topped. but also matches the same correction during the Great Depression. The charts look exactly the same. So to answer your question, when that goes up, just like the Roaring Twenties, everything is going to go up. So the market has corrected. Mm -hmm but we're going to get a retrace in the market. Everything is gonna boom, everything is gonna be okay. And then I believe some kind of conflict, whatever news they're gonna use, like they used the C19, I wanna be careful on your podcast to say that word, right? Then everything corrected. That is what I see happening yeah. again. So crypto will run, but that you think this correction is bad? This will happen like COVID-19 in 24 to 48 hours, the whole market will dump 30%. And I, and I, yeah, and, well, and I think, and so this is what you picked up on us yes. talking about when we first came in, is that what black swan event, right? Mm -hmm. And my argument was, and I'm kind of, I was going down the road that you were already going down, which is, it kind of seems like this, the whole thing that's going on with Russia and the Ukraine, this could lead to the biggest crisis in Europe, kind of, some will argue it already is, since World War II is happening right now. Mm -hmm. Is this that black swan event? Is this the precipice? Are we there? Are we going to see the big drop as a result of the actual invasion? And, and you know, Christian's basically saying no, because they're already pricing that in. You know, it's, it's already, they're already ahead of, of this, and, and they've kind of already priced this in. So that's the big scary, that was the big scary thing for, for me. And so here's, you told us to stop talking. So here's my counter argument working. You remember China and Taiwan? Mm -hmm. That talk that was happening a couple months ago, I said be on the watch. They use that to also bring it back. That is their talk. There is wars on multiple fronts, but China and Russia doing that are also what I talked about, BRICS nation, Brazil, um, 
It's right. Brazil, India, Russia. China, Russia, and South America. And not South, uh, yeah, somewhere, I forgot what country in South America. But um, they're trying to get their own currency outside of the SWIFT system, mm -hmm. right? Which is why China has done the digital yuan. So all this war stuff that's going on, physical war, it started a while ago. And I'm not going to go into the pandemic and all that stuff, or how that's a, it's a different move financially because, I'll give you an example, China has thrived in that market. They expected that move. They did that move. If you look at some of the videos, Google and see the videos in November of 2019, what was going on during the pandemic in China versus what really happened in the world. It was a propaganda move to move money. During that time, China got to test their digital yuan. They actually gifted citizens free money to go out and test their crypto application. And so America is so far behind, so they're trying to use war. And in war is how America built their wealth. They built it through oil. They built it through war and World War II. Remember, we were not a power after World War I until World War II. And then we took over oil, right? But then oil crashed a couple, a couple about a year and a half ago to negative $17. That's part of the switch for money. So it's really Bretton Woods. So Bretton Woods, but we just had a new Bretton Woods. So you got to be very careful when they're speaking war on both sides that's so loud and clear because then their markets are pricing in and they're worried about it. But now, as I told him, Britain has just opened up. There's no, there's no uh, mandates anymore. Multiple countries are open. So why aren't the markets firing up? Why are they selling off? Because they're being priced in for a possible war. Versus, oh, the economy's getting back to normal. It's going up, so let's be excited. Why are we having sell-offs in the equities across the world? Well, Evergrande. China hasn't paid their debt that's in a month and a half. That's what I was going to mention, and that's not in the news that much anymore, right? And that yeah. was going to be the downfall of China, and yep. they're going to go through their 2008 market collapse just Brother like Lee. we did. Yep. And why aren't we hearing anything about that at, at, at this point anymore? Yeah. Why aren't we hearing these stuff? Because they don't want the retail investor well, to sell. Why hasn't it happened yet? Well, that, it, ha it has been. Right. <clears throat> it right. has, but when the government... Because what China is doing is they're not bail. The, the difference between what we did in the United States and what they're doing is different. Okay, mm -hmm. what what China is doing is they're basically coming out, and what they're doing is they're not they're they're not paying off the the people who made the mistake. Okay, what they're doing is they're supplying money to the banks that own the the note for these entities that did bad behavior, and so as a result, they'll end up owning them all. The 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 government owns the owns it all. Yep. It's BlackRock specifically. So if you Google BlackRock, it's like the fourth entity of yeah. the government. They buy all the debt here. China with Evergrande, China's going to let Evergrande fail. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. So when, when they fail, the reason is because Evergrande holds a lot of notes to American property here. So when they fail, then we'll see it. But as it's failing, no, not until they fail. Then it will hit us hard. But by that time, everything will be priced in, and then they'll blame it on a war. Yep. So they will, you think they will? Ukraine. They're going to blame it on Russia because China can't do no wrong in the eyes of of, of this well, well, well we can't do anything to china anyways this presidency right now yeah. china does nothing wrong right so yeah. that's why we don't hear about taiwan anymore that's why we don't hear about the digital yuan hey that's also why they're not fighting cryptocurrency they're gonna let china go into first place that's what's happening which on on average here's another stat for you on average world currencies last a uh, hundred years yeah we're in year 98 right like so the next world power, and who has been preparing over and over for 20 years now? It's been China. China has been pushing and slowly buying everything up in America, buying all the debt up in America. That's why we are in major debt to China right now. And so when the money switches over, who's going to co control the money supply so, outside of the IMF? So, but, but the thing of it is, for the world, so the world's economy is pegged to the U.S. dollar. I, I, I don't believe, personally, I do not believe that's going to change. Even though China is ahead. Trying to. Yeah. Ch ch even though China's ahead, the, the, the world isn't going to trust a dictatorial leadership regime to have, to hold the peg of, you know, of the economy, the world's economy. Um, it's just way, way too risky as far as that goes. So things have to happen to, to you know, to all the chess piece, pieces have to be manipulated at this point. You ready for my tinfoil hat? Go for it. So I did a, a podcast that YouTube actually just took down where I went through all the IMF documents on what they're going to do with the world reserve currency here by 2025 to 2030. Literally, their documents, I went through it in detail. YouTube took it down and said it was bullying or harassing or some crazy conspiracy thing. Anyway, they explained how they're going to use a digital yuan, uh, an American U.S. dollar, and an IMF digital currency, which is where crypto comes in to, manipul to, to move everything. They're going to be able to use all three of those. So China 
and this is to prevent war, by the way. All of this will be to prevent war, to give China the power to have a currency that will also work with the U.S. dollar because the U.S. Will, will nuke things before they allow us not to have the U.S. dollar anymore. Mixed with the IMF, so therefore it breaks up in sections. The China is going to take care of certain parts of the world, the U.S. along with Britain and Paris or in France and Spain, that, that part of the world that bankers are going to take care of other people, and then the IMF will overlook everything. But then again, that's not until... 2025, 2030. We're looking five, 10 years down the road. That isn't going to happen when the great switch happens. No. It, that's further down the road. Yes. Yes. And, and, and then people will also ultimately ask, too, it's like, well, is this the beginning of the one world currency? It, it is the foundational pieces of it, but I'm telling you right now, we're not going to see it in, in our lifetime, I don't believe. You don't think one world currency will be in our lifetime? Well, not in mine. He's, he's about 15 years older than me. Let me point that out there because I believe I... He might. You guys might. I, I'm just saying I probably won't unless a miracle drug comes along. Well, couldn't you say that XRP is on the, block, on the road to being a one-world currency? If, if I you think say it's, it, it's an exchange. It's, it, you have to understand what it, it makes it easier for this to, to, to get facilitated, but it itself won't be the currency. So, so this, this is tenfold hat on again. XLM Stellar, which is built behind the scenes through IBM, mm -hmm. behind the scenes through United Nations, behind the scenes through the IMF, and this is, this is their currency is XLM Stellar. I mean, it goes all the way to Jeb Michaela, who's related to the person who founded United Nations. It's that deep, it's 100 years back. There are the people trying to control the one world currency. Although all of us will have different dollars, fiats, yeah. The one world currency, I believe now, is going to just be the crypto application that allows everyone to be connected. Right. But for us to say everyone's using the U.S. dollar, no. But I think we're all, dee -dee -dee -dee, and it's a one world currency, but not a one world fiat. So we were, it's more like a one, the, the, the main blockchain, mm -hmm. right, where everything operates on and everything in our, off, I, I, all coins are offshoots I, of that blockchain. You're kind of, you're, now you're on the right track. And, and see, here's the other thing, too. Everybody believes, if, if you're into this at all, you'll start doing research. It's like, well, should I put my money into XLM and Stellar, or should I put my money into XRP and, and, and Ripple? And the thing of it is, they're really not in competition. Yeah. You have to understand how Ripple Labs is going to facilitate a certain way that money moves on an international basis. And you have to also understand how... Uh, uh, Stellar and, and XLM is going to facilitate money movement on more of a regional and local basis. Mm -hmm. You got uh, cross-border payments versus everyday, everyday, everyday uh, transactions, uh, transactions. applications, mm -hmm. right? So XLM, for instance, will be about us moving our money inside of America, small buying. Uh, XRP is for has never Big. been made for retail investors. So for us to own XRP right now, they will tell you it is not for us. The, Ripple will tell you. People yep. at Ripple will tell you this was not ever made for retail trading. This it really wasn't. They used it for us to test. So again, if you can get your hands on it when it's shut down, it's gonna. It's for it to run. It has to work at between a thousand and ten thousand dollars per thing once they flood. That's moving all the money. Per, per coin. Just per so coin. you know, this is the one that's currently 60 cents today. Can yes. you buy Ripple still right now? Yeah. It's XRP. It for, you can buy XRP. XRP. Yeah. And you can also buy Ripple's IPO. They're, they've got pre-IPO right now because they're their extra company. So that whole security thing, no, it's not a security. It's a utility, which is different. And you that's ask correct. this question, then, you know, buying a stock in Apple versus buying XRP. Those are two totally different types of purchases and investments. Then. The one thing that you mentioned when you said regulation that we also talk about is the DAOs. If they don't, people don't know what it is, it's a decentralized autonomous organization. Correct. And I've been reading articles, well, you know, because of Google's algorithm, DAOs been popping up on my feed. It's saying, they're saying 2022 is the year of the DAOs. But DAOs is pretty much of a way to uh, raise equities and, you know, get investors. Right. Autonomously. Yeah. <laughs> so... But then you, and you said regulation is going to come in. Are DAOs going to be the first to get regulated? You want to fire that one? I, so, so here's the thing. The first to get regulated? No. Will they? Yes. Will, okay. be, will DAOs be banned? Because I don't think so. I don't think so. And, and, and everybody, has different, mm -hmm. everybody has different feelings about this. The reason why I don't think so is people don't understand. Everybody thought, and this goes back to when Charles was talking about when um, you know, the, the big uh, blackmail event happened where um, $3 million was paid in Bitcoin. Well, and then the government was able to hack and then we were able to get it back. Well, how? If this is all, you know, trust me, there's, 
there is more fingerprints from a digital standpoint mm -hmm. than people have the, the brain ability to understand, okay? Um, and, and so at the end of the day, I, I, I think there might be a fuss about things, but at the end of the day, while DAOs are what they say that they are, there's still digital fingerprints mm -hmm. all over them and there'll be regulation that c comes in as a result. So it won't be the, in my opinion, it won't be the first to be regulated, but DAOs will ultimately be regulated. I can tell you in America, anything with the word autonomous. <laughs> or, Correct. Or but, but they'll let you believe that it is in name. That's my point. That's where I'm coming yeah. from. They'll, be, they'll, they'll let you believe that it is in name, but in reality, Go ahead and do it that way because you're going to be easy. It'll be easier for us to catch you because we're going to put in technical abilities to make it not as autonomous as you think it what, is. What blew my mind away, what blows my mind is in Bitcoin for the longest time, what did the government, it's used for criminals, right? That's criminals and drugs. Bitcoin, you can track every single movement in crypto. Correct. Everything. You can. There, nothing, even the privacy coins, yeah. right? They still have a transaction number. Like I can, everything has a social security. But to answer your question, um, no, exchanges are going to get banned, and then SPACs are what they're going to come after. Gary Gensler said it himself. Correct. SPACs are much like DAOs to me. And so when they do that, they don't, they, the whole point of the SEC, which used to be about helping investors, is no longer about helping the retail investor. Yeah. It just, and that's what this lawsuit is. And it proved it because when they dropped it, XRP dropped 70% the day they put the lawsuit in. And they don't care because they were warned it would happen because everyone, people who own XRP have never heard of Ripple, right? We could talk XRP, they're like, what's Ripple? Because they don't know. But the regulation with exchanges are gonna come because it's all about getting the retail investor out. DAOs help the retail investor. SPACs help the retail investor, which is equities, right? They do not want you to mess up the system. It's a banker system. It's not a hardworking man system. Just like the school system teach you. What do they teach you in school? Go in there, get a nine to five, be happy with retirement and be lucky to have insurance in a family. They don't teach you to go out and make money and be wealthy. So is retail screwed? If they educate themselves, no. If they want to be on TikTok and do dances all day and do that, yes. So, so that's the thing. It's like it, it, they're right now, I mean, if it's still up, I don't even know if it is, but you want to learn more about, you know, what's going on with the, the SEC and XRP and this is the first time you're hearing about it, go check out Jeremy Hogan. If it's still up on YouTube, on YouTube yeah. you'll, you'll get you'll get great insights. He's an attorney, by the way, um, but the fact of the matter is, he gives great insights on actually what's happening every step of the way um, as far as what's going on with this lawsuit and the mistakes that the SEC has made and everything else. Well, all of a sudden, YouTube has come up again. Everybody, they're going after everybody, and they're taking things down. Why would they do that? Yeah, and it, it started it, right at the crypto correction. Correct right at the crypto correction. People started losing their channels 100%, like things going down. And it's because it's, it's just about education. So with the retail investor, man, like here, here's what I say to the retail investor. The United Nations wrote an article in Forbes a couple of years ago, and it said by 2030, you will own nothing and be happy. That's, that's the uh, phrase of the rich, right? We will uh, feed you, we will clothe you, we will house you, we will entertain you, but you own nothing. Right. So is the retail investor now depends on if that retail investor is happy owning nothing or if you're like me, yourself, yeah. or Brad here. So along with that quote, though, I, I, that, that article, that, that quote, I'm going to give you another quote. And this quote came from J.D. Rockefeller. Uh -huh. And the quote from J.D. Rockefeller is close to that, but if you read between the lines, you truly understand. J.D. Rockefeller's favorite quote was, the richest man in the world at the time, right, is that I own nothing, I control everything I want to. So there's a difference, right, between ownership and control. And it, it's about what you control and what name. So it goes to Charles' phrase, Educate yourself. You gotta, you gotta educate. Um, nobody's gonna do it for you. You can trust people, but yeah. but at the end of the day, educate yourself. Become as educated as you can be in this space. It, it's only gonna help you in the long run. Yeah. So so to, to answer your question, I don't believe the retail investor is screwed. Okay, along with Charles, but you gotta understand. And and here's the here's the crux of it. It takes a lot of time. How much time a day do you invest in educating yourself in this space? Nine to 10 hours a day. Exactly. Still, so so if time. you've got a, my point is simply this, if, if you do other things with your time, okay, if, if you're, if you've got a real job, you know, you're out there still earning, you're still doing the things that you normally do, you're playing poker, doing whatever you want that makes you happy in your life. If you're not devoting your, 
the time that's needed to the space, then you are at risk as a retail investor. Unless, now, unless, and this is a small plug, there are people out there on YouTube or that do podcasts that do the research for you. Yeah. And if you actually look and you do it yourself, you can grab and hold, because investing sometimes is about buying and holding. Yeah. So we've named a few here. Mm -hmm. Go look them up, buy. If you're gonna buy now, like the charts are at, buy red. You always buy when it's red, right? Buy when it's red, sell when it's green, and do your own research. But, but I'm gonna give everybody out there that just a, a bit of advice. If you're, if, you're, if you're gonna go into this, and you're gonna margin trade because you're like, oh my God, I could really make all kinds of money margin trading. Here's the one warning I, I will give you because I've made this mistake. And I'll guarantee you Charles did too when he was first starting out. As smart as he is now, I'll guarantee you he did. When you're margin, if you margin trade, you're gonna get wrecked. And the reason why is because even if you're the best TA guy in the world, you have to understand how much market manipulation goes on in this space because it is unregulated. Yep. And let me tell you something, governments are playing in this space. If you don't believe it, all you gotta do is, how many times have you said to me, this should not have happened. Mm -hmm. This should not have happened. This should not have happened. Because there's massive market manipulation in the space, so you really gotta know your stuff. And everything, and that's why, that's why I'm into GameStop. I don't know how much you guys are aware yeah, yeah. of or know how in depth you know about GameStop, but that's the, my only play because, like you say, it's all manipulation, it's everything that's coming to the culmination and it involves every, all the spaces, it involves gaming, it involves blockchain, it involves crypto, NFTs. So, so to, I've been telling everybody GameStop, but nobody's listening to me. Well, that, well, so here's the thing. No one will listen to you because mass media said it was right. not true, right? Now, here's the thing. They are going into NFTs. GameStop is making that move. Now they've made a lot of money in the retail, but it's the same thing as anything. Got to be careful. It's a topping structure, right? So if you're ready to hold long term, I think yeah. GameStop is awesome, yeah. right? Yeah. But this market, and I'm saying this again, and I said it to the family office guy next to me, and I, hey, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I don't know if that guy is ever gonna watch this, but the guy that was sitting next to me, I told him in the next week he was gonna lose a lot of money. The stock market has dumped more than it has since 2020, all the way back to 2008, exactly. And that guy in the family office is like, not, no, he's like, oh, I just need 5%. And I said, and I said that to him, I said, yeah. 5%? Man, like that's a normal, hour in crypto so if you are able to handle the volatility that's going to come with amc you're going to make a lot of money off of it but it's going to be a scary scary ride so so just to, to christian's point in the last nine hours as much as we're not bitcoin or eth people okay in the last just nine hours eth is up 12 percent yeah. off of the bounce okay uh, bitcoin's up nine percent off of the bounce these are the kinds of moves that happen in this space on a fairly regular basis. Every other day. Yeah. yeah. And so for me, because I'm not worried because uh, when people ask me about my shares in GameStop, I tell them I'm just sad because I don't have any more money to buy more sales. <laughs> yeah, I can't buy more. Or, yeah. It's not like I'm worried about the dip because I, this is all trade on fundamentals and it's the long term. I don't mm -hmm. look at the balance. But I did used to trade crypto on just purely on manipulation where I would set my buy at super low and my sale is super high because like every once or twice a month you always see these like just yep were you margin trading those i was what happened well some of those times overnight the, just the, 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 the win just, yeah those wicks will get you right yeah. and the windows are just too tight when you start margin and the, trading. And those are called liquidation wicks yeah yep. So yep. That, that's why i eventually i, I made hey. some money but i got out because i'm like i, I don't want to be stuck in this 24 hours mm -hmm. and so I just went to GameStop and just you know because of, then I started looking because of that I started looking into manipulations uh -huh. and then the GameStop saga it's no started. different in this space as a matter of fact yeah. it's probably worse yeah well in the stock market in the equities market you it's, got you know not bad. only Congress doing what they do but now it's against their morals to for the feds to actually own crypto when they just I mean not own crypto own stocks but they decide to pass that and say it's against our morals to own stocks. We should get rid of it. They did that literally the day the market topped. They bought in in 20, 20, 2008. So you're telling me 13 years later, after it literally has gained the most it ever has, and now it's moral, immoral for us to own it, and now they get rid of it? For, forget about morality and immorality. The, the funniest thing is that most people, if you ask them around a poker table, if you said, hey, who was the most famous investor of the United States in the last 50 years, most people, would you not agree, would say Warren Buffett. And they'd be wrong they'd because be really the real wrong. person is Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> She's the it's most not successful, a joke. Most yeah. successful trader 
in history, because, Nancy Pelosi. Because everything's corrupted now. But it's not even manipulation anymore. Now we're to move on to corruption because yeah. this is where like, I started looking, understanding how corrupted the stock market is where everybody's IRAs is being, the, their stocks in the IRA is being used to short against them to plummet their own assets down to, to rob them of their own wealth. Yep. And this is happening to everybody's savings account and people just don't see this, that the money is being used against them. And that's just, that's so much corruption that is starting to come out now. I mean, there's, you know, if, if, if you ever do have us on again or have me on again, I will break down exactly how a bank works. Banks work off debt. They yeah. work off putting you in debt. Banks cannot exist without using your money against you. So this corruption is how the system was built when they met on Jekyll. 5,000 years. You know, That's like, how long this system has been, the current monetary system has been in place. 5,000 years. Which is why each world power has failed because the monetary system has failed and they've always gone to war to try to prevent that, which has caused them to lose. You go back to Rome, you can go back to Constantinople, you can go back, you can keep going every single time this is happening. This empire called the United States is an empire and they are falling and they are crumbling because of the financial infrastructure. But it's, it's been said that every world power, because there were, there were the currency at the world reserve, mm -hmm. they have to eventually depreciate it because they, they have to print more for, for use. So any, it's, it's almost like inevitable that any world power will inevitably self-destruct itself the well, monetary yeah, I mean, this is issue. the first time, though, in history that there actually hasn't been, you know, what they call God's money, right? Back in outside of shells, seashells. It used to be that, but then it became gold. But once we got rid of it and it became the United States' trust us, it's yeah. the U.S. dollar. The military backs it, which is then why the industrial complex really kicked in because the more people go to war, they buy from us. They use the U.S. dollar. So, therefore, again, war is what's stopping it. So every world power... Printing, I mean, we have 40% of all money printed in the last year and a half. 40% in the last 100 years, 40% was made in the last couple of years. So Luke Ring basically said, because uh, it came out later too, be your own bank. Is this a facade, a dream? No, or no. Is it like, no. Actually, Can I tell it? Yeah, this is you, man. But yes, So that's I started not. in 2016 with $100. Mm -hmm. I think I told you this. Uh, in a couple months, I made 100000 And now I'm a multimillionaire. But my goal in crypto is to create a bank to be our own bank, to be in the system. That's what got me in was be your own bank and it didn't make any sense to me so I started researching and that's where Ripple comes in. That's where XRP about being your own bank. I am almost out of the system. I pay everything on my crypto card. Here, I will, uh -huh. this right here, let me see. That's my poker card. This right here, Coinbase card, okay? This is a Coinbase card. This is only crypto. This is not American bank accounts. I move money in and out. I spend. I can take money off of it. I swipe. I get everything. And I get 4% back in XLM. This is where we're going. I do not. only reason I use a bank now is because I want to have good credit. But, but, <laughs> but the, 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 the saying is the banks control the world. Like, hmm, yeah. Are they, are right they now, just reinventing themselves? <laughs> or they, they're not they're trying to. Right. With you, right. So, so this comes out. Now we're talking about. You, you know, everybody's heard of um, probably by now, you know, you've got um, uh, CBDCs, right? Central bank digital currencies. This is where everything stems from, right? Because y you have to understand how the banking system, that's why I said this is a subject all on its own. And that's why yeah, I said yeah. you might want to have us back at some point yeah. to talk about this one. But that's why CBDCs are, are being created, right? The digital one is yeah. why it's being created is because no government conceptually can give up that control so as long as they the cbdc as long as the currency even in a digital format is still controlled by a central not a decentralized but a centralized ledger then they still ultimately have control no matter if it's in the blockchain or not and just, and just remember 99 90 percent of america does something that 10 percent of america doesn't we are on the 10 percent. then there's a one percent level that moves completely different we can move in and out, right? We're sitting right here, it's the, what time is it? One o'clock in the afternoon and we're not working a nine to five. 90% yeah. of America is. So 90% of America is always gonna use the banks. They're never going away. It's the people who have become their own bank. They can become their own bank because they have created their own wealth. So for instance, I bought a house, right? Without having to get a loan. I was able to use my own collateral, be my own bank, take out a loan on my own money in crypto and purchase my house in cash. 
I did not use the banking system. There so still had to be an exchange. There still had to be an exchange of that, and that's where the banks bank, currently bank are. Comes in. But think about this, and I think this will relate and hit home with just about anybody. Even five years ago, you know, you go to a bank, it's fully staffed, you, you know, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I, today, I mean, I just got a letter I shared with Christian the other day. It's like, hey, during this time of COVID, you know, banks may or may not be open. Even when it's not times of COVID, if you re have you recognized over the last few years, there's like two people in a bank anymore. You know, there's just the, the, the whole the whole structure isn't. You can see that it's actually changing, and there's a reason for that. I mean, everything's already digital. I showed you my card. But We're 98 percent digital. People yeah. are like, yeah. what? Yeah, think Apple, about it. Apple Pay. Everything's digital. Yeah, it's, it's weird to walk around spending cash, walls of cash now. All right, to carry cash, yeah, I do that like to come here. You look like a drug dealer, you go to the mall and use cash. Yeah, yeah. That's perception. So, so this goes back, and I, I'll just share this because I, I don't think Christian probably finished this, his thought, but this, this, is the, this is the hypocrisy of what our current monetary system is, is because the government, our government, you'll hear certain legislators talk about the fact that, you know, this is a scary space, all of the drug and human trafficking, they're trying to make it out to be the bad guy. I'm going to tell you something right now, and everybody, this, everybody should agree with this. There will never be in the history of man, okay, a more corrupted item to exchange dr for drugs or human trafficking or anything else than the dollar bill that you have inside of your wallet right yeah. now. Yeah. That, that right there is the, the thing that is, dr has driven, and it, you will never see things that were driven by that war. It, casualty, it, that this right even, there. This, this thing is not even worth anything. It's a piece of paper. That's the thing. It's backed by what? Supply and demand. The, the world needs it. So crypto, when it's ready, the banks are going to be what turns to it, which they already have, because it saves them money. So even though maybe you and I won't individual, well, we will, but some individuals here won't individually hold crypto, right? You won't hold it, but it's still being used. You use the internet, but... Banks are charging you now to deposit that in their bank mm -hmm. how, how insane is that why, why would he, they he do looks that like huh what i didn't know that yeah i so in my bank I'll, I'll i'll say it right now pnc is my bank and they are partnered with ripple okay uh, they are on a large scale but if i deposit more than five thousand dollars a month in cash they charge me for it and I started. And go I look started, it up. Yeah, go look it up. If I you started don't looking it. like, huh? And so I asked them. They said, oh, it's, and I called and I asked. They said, oh, it's because you have large cash transactions over a month period. More than this, we don't really want that much cash anymore. They don't want cash. So they're charging you when you give them cash. How insane is that? It, it's, it's only insane if you didn't realize of how much printing has gone on since 2008, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a burden anymore, right? It is a burden because I think that's why the repo rate, mm -hmm. I think the re reverse repo rate is so high, like $1.6 trillion on a daily basis now. Yep. Banks that have too much cash in there. Yeah, yep. It's interesting. Uh, well, I think uh, we'll call the next, our next topic should be uh, like the evolutions of banks and how they're going to be a major player in this. I can't see Chase, Bank of America, those big entities in City Bank. Uh, okay, let's, let's, I, I think you'll agree with me on this. Here's the big tease, okay? How many banks are currently out there? That's, I think four major ones. Okay, so so you're you're right. You know, it, what makes up what makes up the Federal Reserve? The four major ones. Okay, so so it's actually five. But you're you're on the right track, okay? So the fact of the matter is, though, if if I can't even calculate how many actual physical banks there are, it just even here in Dallas, I'll guarantee you there's hundreds of banks. You're going to see a mass, in my opinion, mass consolidation of, of banks because there's just not... It's already happening. Not the, the, it, it, it is. It is. But, I, I mean, it's, it's really... Yeah, you, yeah. you still see hundreds and hundreds, but there's going to be a yeah. mass con consolidation. So, so these, these banks aren't really going to be banks anymore. They're really financial institutions now. Places to go pay your bills. I think it's really what it will look like to move money because it, I I look at banks really as an an, an, an exchange in, in, in inside themselves at this point. It's yeah, a, it's really I that's how I think of banks as an exchange. Make the money off of loans or anything. I think all the, You'd be the insane to get a home loan through a Okay, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not telling you what to do. But I'm just saying you'd be insane to go through a, a mortgage or a car loan or any of those at a, lo a local bank. Some people use 
you know, I, I, I get the whole credit union thing. I understand the value there, but I, I think all of this is becoming a, a mass consolidation because Christian just showed you where this is all going. I, 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 I choose to believe that that's a fact. It's, it's very factual. That's where this is all going. You're going to become your own banks. Ultimately. I, again, I only use the bank to write the check. For the my house, all my money only just, because you have to. I just moved into. I just literally moved it from my exchange into the bank, wrote a check. Only because you currently have to. I have to. But yeah. but but in three years. But in New York already, there is a company, Prop B, and, and and all that that are accepting crypto to do it. I've talked to one of the major bank players here in Texas, who is trying to do that and accept crypto for house loans. It's already there. The question is. Are you going to be at the beginning or are you going to be at the end? Everyone's going to do it. The question is, when will you take advantage? I think we could also need to touch up on that, how to, to conceptualize that idea more of how, being your own bank versus just holding assets and then using as, that as collateral for loan. But, just, but, but here's the thing. When you, when you can go through, and this is happening right now as we speak, okay? I'm sorry if I'm running you over no. here, but I, we warned you we were talkers. <laughs> um, we're good. But, but, but here's, here's the thing that you have to realize that's, that's going on. Look, if you can be in this space, okay? Think about this for a minute. If you can be in this space, and you, let, let's just say, let's use the numbers, $100,000. You put $100,000 in this space. This can happen right now, by the way. You can take out a loan against yourself for that $100,000, okay, in crypto. But you can also be earning an APY on, on this crypto. And, and you have the ability to become essentially your own bank as a result of all of this. The only piece that's currently missing is that you can do peer-to-peer -peer transactions, okay, w with this. As soon as that happens, what it, you have to question what is then the real use of a bank, a, a, a bank that we know of that, that exists today. And so that's, basically now you have everybody's holding their own crypto to do peer-to-peer -peer loans with the crypto as that, assets, right? So this is, a, this is, well, that's a whole, I know we that's, said the next one. We, so next time we come up, we'll talk about banking and DeFi, right? Yeah. The de decentralized finance. And that's where this comes to answer what it means to be your own bank and then what exactly is a bank. Yeah. So and, you got to know what a bank is hey, to be your own and, bank. And then we can go down a different rabbit hole, which is what's really decentralization. Yes. Because yeah. that's a whole other topic. There's the purists, there's maxis, there's people <laughs> that understand what it needs to be. So that's a whole other topic among, uh, among itself, too. A whole new rabbit hole. Yes. All right. Well, Lots we'll, we'll say that for next time because then otherwise we don't want to give away. But yeah. I think I would definitely have you guys back on again. Cool. We appreciate right. you having us, Tom. Appreciate yep. you. Thanks a lot, guys.